Go to import real world height map data texture files into Gaia is actually fairly straightforward. The simplest way to bring in a file is literally just to drag it in. So I've just got a, a landscape height map file here. I'm just going to drag in and place in the graph. And as you can see, it just loads up immediately. This file I downloaded from a website called Earth Explorer USGS. And I'll leave a link to this in the video details. A couple of caveats around these files. They should be grayscale. It won't work as well or at all if you use a color image with RGB values. If you bring in your grayscale height map, and it's got this value here is RGB ticked, then you can just untick it. It brings in the correct preview. You may also find sometimes you get artifacts or lots of bumps and things in the file. That just depends on the quality of the actual file. If you get that, if you can re-download a high quality version, that's the best thing to do. If not, you can drag out from file and just add a blur. And then just do a really low blur value and that can help to smooth it out. Of course, you do lose some of the finer details if you do that, but it's still it's still an option. In this case, though, because the, the file is a good quality, I'm just going to delete the blur there and continue with this file. Let's just preview it in 4K just to see how it looks in 4K. And that looks really good. Lots of detail there. All very clear. I'm just going to take this back down to 2K because working in 4K takes a lot longer to process. So that's quite slow. So we'll go to 2K. Now we've got this. We can amend and tweak this somewhat. And I'll show you a few things that I might do if I bring in real world height map data. So select the file. Let's just raise up the level a bit. So with that file selected on the right hand side in the, its properties at the bottom, click on auto level. Now that's like way too strong. So click on the plus button and then just click on clamp. And now we can just dial that back. So just drag down the value from one to about 0 0.08. I'll put this file into the down into the description as well. So you can use this specific file if you wish. And that's looking you know, that's looking even better. So this file that I downloaded, I couldn't actually find a corresponding satellite imagery for the color, for a color texture. So, I mean, you could, you know, you, you can tweak this a bit more, export it out and then use it in your game engine, like Unreal Engine, wherever you want to use it. And then you could add a material there, just create your own. In this case, I can create uh, some texture files or a texture file here in Gaia. To do that, though, I will need to create a river mask. So I'll add a river node. Or in this case, I should say I'll add a lake node. As the problem with the river nodes is they're quite like thin. And although they work great, I need something that's got more coverage and I can use the lake node from file. Let's just drag off and search for lake and that adds a lake. Now how these simulation nodes work, so lake and sea and river are simulation nodes, is that they do require a terrain or a primitive terrain to actually calculate where the water should go. If I just delete the connection for a second, click on lake. Now obviously there's nothing showing because it's got nothing to calculate the water for. I'll just plug that back in and Gaia is really good at finding high and low points and also just the flow of water. So clearly this is too much and it looks more like the area has been flooded, which you may want. But for this case, let's try and stick closer to the rivers. So I'm just going to bring down the precipitation. So possibly a bit too much. You can also right click on the value and I'm going to key in three. I'll stick with that. And you can see it's following these rivers here. It's perhaps a little bit higher, but I'm, I'm happy with that. It's got some water here, which I don't want, or some water bodies. So in the small lakes value, we can push that right up and that removes most of them. So small lakes, basically, it's the influence of small water bodies. And in this case, the higher it is, um, the less there are, basically. Now we've added a lake and we can use this as our mask for texturing. Sorry, we've added a lake for the rivers and we could use this as a mask for our texturing. Now, even though Gar's done a really good job of estimating where the water should go, we have still got some water in the center here, especially just around here where my mouse is, um, which we don't actually want because that doesn't follow the exact flow of the river. If I just click back here, it's kind of like, it, it looks like it's flooding again. So at this point, moving the precipitation value doesn't really make a lot of difference and I don't really want to take it any lower but we can mask out specific areas of the lake of the water and that gives us quite granular control 
of a where we can place our, our rivers and our lakes and so forth on these type of maps. To do that, I mean, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. We're going to use a draw node and a mask. So I'm just going to drag out from file and add a combine. And with combine at the bottom, we've got a mask socket there. I'm going to drag out from the out of water and plug that into the second socket. And with that combine node selected, if I just drag the ratio up to one, you can clearly see all the water being added. Drag it down to zero, it removes the lake completely. So you can also use the ratio here to blend any lakes or rivers in. But I'm going to put it right up to one because I want the full effect. I have lost, when I press combine, I've lost this water, uh, this blue water uh, visualization here, but that's fine. I can still see where it is via the smooth areas. And you know when we come to texturing it, we can add the water back in there. So now let's just remove these water that we don't want. So to do that, drag out from this mask socket and search for draw and then add a draw node. Now what you'll see is the water will disappear immediately when you've added a draw node. That's because it's masked out the water. Whatever node is plugged into the bottom socket of the combine will get masked out. But let's select the draw node in its details on the right hand side, top right hand side. Click on the button that's got three lines and then just change it to mask because we want to use this as a mask. Now click on open painter and click back on the combine node and now we actually get a view of the height of the landscape. I'm just going to drag down this panel box a bit because these bottom values here actually go over the bottom of the map. So I'm just going to uncover the bottom of the map before we proceed. Now this doesn't come with a flood or fill, so we can't flood it white or, or black variations. So we're just going to have to paint it again. Um, I have tried with the draw node, I have tried using the invert option in the modifier stack, but it's actually caused Gaia to crash, unfortunately. So the draw node is one node which still can be a bit unstable, um, but hopefully that will get fixed in one of the upcoming updates as well. So how it works is basically We've got these values at the bottom. If you drag the height value to white, it basically reveals. And if you drag the height value to the left, right to the left, or the darker areas, the, the black, then that hides. And that's pretty standard masking across, you know, multiple different programs. So let's just reveal everything. Let's drag it to the right. Let's increase the size. And let's now just paint in everything. Because I want to start with, I just want to see where all the water is. Let go, and now all the water has come back. We can see it clearly there, the smooth areas are back. Now, in the height value, drag that down, right to the left. I'm gonna bring down the size a bit. Very simply, I don't want this water here, so I'm just gonna draw around this area. So, when I let go of the mouse, you can see it's been hidden. So this is a really good way of having granular control over where our lakes and rivers are placed, and you could actually sculpt out and draw out a river this way. What I will do is let's just bring the height value back up to the light area again. And I am going to reduce the size of the brush. And I am going to just paint around this area here, like so. It's going over the bounds of the, um, the river a bit, but for this tutorial, that's fine. I mean, obviously you can spend some more care and change the size to even smaller if you wish. Um, but this just gives you the principles of how to do it. And that's it. That's how we can mask out rivers using the draw node. Let's close this down. The one thing that you may have noticed is that the river here is actually going above the landscape, which looks a little bit odd. Um, that's not what we're looking for. So to fix that, what we can do is from the combine node, we can drag out again and just add another combine node from the draw. Drag off, and this time don't place it in the mask, place it in the second input socket. And now change in this combine, change it to subtract, and just really reduce down the value, the ratio, really low as we can go without removing it completely. So, so what might be easier if you just click on this value here, right click on it, I should say, and I've got a value of zero for, sorry, zero point zero zero four five. And now the water's fitting in really nicely. It has given us an additional problem with this kind of elevated ground here, which you may or may not want to keep, but let's try and blend that in a bit more. 
but there are several ways in which we can get rid of this elevation if we want to. You know, we could go back into the draw node. We could actually use some different shades of gray. So instead of just using black and white, we could use some gray and we could go around the edges to blend it in even more. That's one way. You could use an erosion node before we get to this second combine or a blur. For this, let's just stick with the blur. It's probably the simplest way to fix it or to edit it. So let's drag off and draw, search for a blur. Drag down the value, it's going to be pretty low, 0 0.01. Drag from out and plug that into the second combine node. Also drag off and plug it into the mask as well, so these two things match. Now that on that second combine node, press F. So left click on it and press F to force the view. So nothing will change when we click other nodes, or the view won't change. So click back on the blur node and then we can look at increasing the blur. I'm happy to have the slight elevation there and that looks fine. Okay, that's great. So you could go on, you know, you can blend in other surface modifiers, etc., and so forth if you wanted to. But obviously the more you do that, the more you're moving, moving away from the real world height map data. So that pretty much covers the um, editing of the landscape, we could quickly just look at the texturing and specifically masking off these river edits we've done. So what I'm gonna do is select this second combine node here, press F2 and just call it final height. And now press P and convert to portal, click out. So we've added a portal. Now we can right click to somewhere to the right of that node and search for texture base and then press P. And then in the in portal, select it and press final height. And all portals do is they create connections between nodes without having to have a line, which is much easier to manage them and keeps them more tidy. So now drag off from the texture base. Well, actually, before we go any further, let's select this second this second combine node here. Press F to remove the force. Otherwise, it's not gonna. We're not going to be able to see any any um, texturing. So drag off from the texture base. And select set map. And for this, this could be a uh, land. So let's do something like yeah, I quite like that. That's four four three in the rock section. We can always change that if we don't want it. And now let's drag off from texture base again. Select set map. And now do blue. This is going to be our water. That looks all right. That's zero zero four. It might be a bit bright. We can always come and change this later. Let's try 018, see how that looks. Now let's drag off from the sat map, from the top sat map, and plug that into the out or the bottom sat map. And now we've got a blend. We're blending the two together. We'll just drag the ratio up to one, and it's all gone completely in the um, direction of the blue sat map, of course. We need to mask out these rivers here. So to get our river mask, or our lake mask, I should say, it's our lake that's acting as our river. So to get that mask, we've got some outputs here. We've got water, depth, shore, etc. So if I just right click on this river mask and it says show lock 2D viewport, we can have a look at these different masks. In the top right hand side, by clicking this butter button, we can go to water. For some reason, it's not showing it there. I'm not too sure why, I think that's a bug. So usually that would show a clearer mask, but I'm just gonna go back to out, just to show you where that is, if you wanna have a look at your different masks. So let's drag out from water, add an adjust node, so you can search for adjust if it's not there. And now you can see we've got this great water mask here. Now there is a slight problem we've got though. So you see in the middle here, we actually mask this out. So if I click on the blur node, this area here has been masked out, but that's because this draw node is added after the river. So if I drag off of this now and plug it into the mask of the combined node, you can see we've got this water here in the middle of the landscape, which actually looks okay, but we didn't want it there. So what we're gonna have to do is combine two masks together to make a new mask. So let's just delete that connection from there for now. So let's drag off from the blur node, which is where our second mask is coming from. Plug it in or, or hover over the adjust node socket and then let go. In fact, actually, let's put the, the adjust node into the top and the blur node into the bottom. I'm just going to swap around those imp those imports or inputs. And then with this combined node now, let's change this to multiply and drag up the ratio to one. And now what we've got here is we're like combining our two masks. So this mask is completely masked out this area here. We can actually set that, press F2 and call this uh, combined mask, combined river mask. 
Now we've got both of our masks together. With that still selected, press P, convert to a portal, drag that down a little bit. And now select this combine node over here, which is for our two set maps, press P, select mask, and now select combined river mask. That's what we just renamed uh, combined over there. And now when we select it, we've got them both masked out. We've got the, um, the rivers masked out, and we've got our draw masked out as well which is great. Um, the river's possibly looking a little bit bright. We could look at going into the ratio, maybe reduce that a little bit. You know, we could look at using a blend instead. I actually quite like that on add. So that's how we can add textures and also how we can combine the two masks together to make sure that we haven't got water appearing in our texture file where we don't want it. That pretty much covers it. If you've got any questions or comments, please, as ever, you can leave them in the comment section.